couple of verses that we're going to have to spend a little time on them and, uh, and get it. So, so tonight we've learned in, in verse 1, you see verse 1, and you hath he quickened, that word quickened means made alive. Uh, we talked about the course of this world in verse 2. We talked about the prince of the air, power of the air in verse 2. That's Satan and all his demonic powers. And we talked about that spirit in verse 2 that works in the children of disobedience. There's a spirit out here in the world working in people. And uh, that's where the, the National Education System, the NEA um, uh, Association, and all the, the world's, the world's uh, educational system don't believe that. You know what they believe? They believe that everybody's born basically good and that you're a product of your environment to make you commit crimes or something like that. Now, the Bible teaches you're not born good. And the Bible teaches that you're under the influence of a spirit of disobedience before you get saved. Now, if I wasn't even a preacher, if I wasn't even a preacher, and you presented me with that, if I was honest, I'd say, you know what? They ain't no evidence for that. They is for this. You want my evidence? Raise some kids. There's your evidence. Uh, you, you raise kids, you'll find out they got sin in them. Or I don't care what kind of environment they're born in. They're full of the devil before they're two years old. <laughs> you know, they, they really do. They're, they're deceitful little buggers. You know, I, was, I had six. And, uh, and uh, they're all the same. One lady told me one time, she said, my child has never given me a minute's trouble. Uh, my, I can see that. Uh, and uh, I, I've never, but you know what? Uh, here's what they'll do. They'll, you know, they'll, you put them in their bed at night. You got to sleep. I don't want to sleep by me. You got to sleep by you. I don't want to sleep by me. You know, they get three or four or whatever. And, and you put them down, you'll go in there and they'll scream bloody murder. You think somebody's killing them. And you, you walk in there and there's a grin at you. See, uh, they learn how to lie. They learn how to lie. I'm done. You know, and ain't nothing wrong with them. Or, or they'll, or they'll uh, say, all right, who broke that? And they'll do, they'll do it. All of them will. They don't, want to, they don't want to admit. They're like Adam and Eve. When they sin, they hid behind the trees. It's in all your kids. One fellow said, he said, I always thought I had three kids, but I guess I got four. Because every time something happens, none of them did it. Uh, it was him. It was, you know. So kids are inherently sinful. And that makes sense with the world. They have a sinful nature. You know why you've got to be born again? Because you're born wrong the first time. He's born wrong the first time. You think about it. All the in the, you don't have to teach a kid to do wrong. You don't have to say, now look, let me tell you how to steal. Stealing is when you take something that's really not yours and you're not, you don't have to teach them that. They already know how. They'll get their sister's candy. They'll get some, you know, they'll do, they'll do something like that. They'll do something or they'll be a little deceitful. That's a sinful nature inside of the spirit. We're all, uh, I guess, shot, heartbroken again of uh, another school shooting this week. And that's a very, 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 very sad situation. Um, uh, you know, they, they're going to have to wind up putting putting uh, an officer at the school. I don't know why I couldn't do that. You know, they say it traumatizes kids, but it don't traumatize them as bad as that did. But uh, have somebody there to protect that, but I ain't going to get in all that and the politics and everything. Um, but I, I thought I said, uh, there's never been a, a girl's school shooter. You know? And I was right. Uh, so it was, it was bad. It was bad. And it's so heartbreaking for them families. So heartbreaking. And what makes people do stuff like that? What makes a person just walk in a mall and start shooting people? And you know immediately what they'll say? Mental problem. Well, is mental problems what makes people commit adultery? Mental problems what makes people rob banks? Let's, let's go, uh, I think, uh, who's the most famous bank robber? That guy, Bonnie, Bonnie and uh, Clyde. They asked Clyde one time, they said, uh, why do you rob banks, Clyde? He said, because that's where the money is. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> you don't rob a convenience store when you can get a bank. Uh, but uh, it, it's inherited. It's in us. And I tell you this, but every one of us has inside of us a sinful nature that could respond to any kind of sin if it wasn't checked. 
and wasn't kept in the submission to the, the Bible and self-discipline. He said, not me. There's things I'd never do. I wouldn't say that if I was you. You have a sinful nature inside you that can respond to any kind of sin if you start down that road. Sin's, sin's progressive. Sin's always progressive. Nobody starts committing one sin and then just stops. Like nobody, you just smoke pot, then you take that. Then first thing you know, you're going in here. Next thing you know, it's cocaine. Next thing you know, you're shooting up. Next thing you know, it's battery acid and meth mixed together. And no telling what. And that's the way sin is. And if you don't get born again, if you don't get born again, you, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it'll, it'll get out of control. You must be born again. You must be born again. And even when you get born again, you still got that sinful nature. But you just got uh, a new man living inside of you and kill it. Kill that right there. That's got to die. That's got to die. Reckon yourselves dead. Flesh. So we, we said about that. Uh, children of wrath. But, so we're going to change gears just a little bit there. Look at verse 4. We talk about all these bad, how bad we are and how evil we are and how wicked we are. Look at verse 4. But God. Thank the Lord. Shouting ground right there. But God. But he ought to have been gone. But God. I could have been in hell tonight. But God. Remember we done that to youth rally a few years ago? But God. Who is rich in mercy. For his great love. Wherewith he loved us. My, 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 my. What a blessing. What a blessing. We well, rich in mercy. He loved us before we ever loved him. He loved us and then washed us in our sins. My pastor used to say, he said, it wouldn't be so amazing if it said he washed us and then loved us. But he loved us before he ever washed us. That's what's rich in mercy. That's rich in mercy. God's rich in mercy. My, 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 how good God is. You read the Bible, you see his mercy all the way through there. You read, that, you read your Old Testament? Israel. They go crazy in Maryland, and then they get in trouble, and they say, God, forgive us. And the Lord does. And then they do something stupid again, say, God, forgive us, and the Lord does. You see his mercy all the way through the Old Testament. That's a picture of our lives. Israel back in the Old Testament is a picture of our lives now. We do something dumb. We get on our face. God forgives us. We start get a good fresh start. Do something dumb. God forgives us. Get on a fresh start. Do something dumb. Uh, and that's it. That's it. Uh, he, he's rich in mercy, ladies and gentlemen. He's rich in mercy. Now, we had a guy church uh, some time ago. We've had several. I've had several people tell me this. Uh, actually, got down here. I led the Lord a few weeks ago. Told me this. He said, I've done something so bad, I don't know if God can forgive me. And a lot of people are hung up on that. I used to witness that big guy in Marion. I'd go over and witness him. He was my uncle by marriage. He's uh, mar married my aunt, my mom's sister. And they're all done gone now. And uh, big John. Big John, he'd sit there like that. And honest to goodness, his arms was that big around. I mean, he looked like one of them. He looked like Hulk Hogan uh, when in his prime. He's big, bigger arms like that right there. And big, giant of a man. And I sat down and I said, John, why don't you ask the Lord to forgive you? And he just, like his face would get red. And and he just, like, he just, he just like, I don't know. It's like he just, you know, like rage was coming out of him. He said, I can't. I can't. And I said, why? He said, I killed this man. He said he's in, in Japan. And he said, I'm telling you what he said. It's graphic. But he said, he said, we were told to him we had to do what we had to do. And he said, I took a bayonet and I rammed it down that man's throat. And he said, I can hear him screaming. And he said, I can still hear that man screaming at night. And I thought, boy, I mean, I mean, you your sins do haunt you, but can you imagine? That would, that would mess with you. That'd mess with you. It would. I mean, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. He said, I killed that man. He said, God can't forgive me. And I showed him in the Bible. I showed him. That's why God puts him stuff in the Bible, y'all. Moses was a murderer. Moses, the, one of the greatest men in the Old Testament. He killed this man, hit him in the sand. David was a murderer. He had a man killed. Can you imagine being in charge of the army and saying, uh, uh, Let's see, I done made a mistake here messing around with that guy's wife. So let's put him up there on the front and let him get killed. That's, that's worse than what Moses did. It really is. That's more conniving and evil than what Moses did. Moses was at least trying to protect his kinfolk. But David had that man murdered, stole his wife. And the Bible, you know what the Bible said about David? 
He's a man after God's own heart. One of the greatest men in the Bible. Wrote most of the book of Psalms, y'all. Paul, in the New Testament, had Christians murdered, had them put in prison when he was Saul of Tarsus. You know why God puts some stories in the Bible? People like John. Amen? If everybody in the Bible was all perfect and everything, we'd say, Lord, there ain't no hope for me. But there's always somebody in the Bible you can identify with. And you know, and they sat down and said, uh, and, and, and Saul had prisoners put together and, and he met the Lord blind. And I told him all this stuff. I told him all this stuff. And this guy down here in Hickory, Johnny, I said, Johnny, you can be forgiven. He said, really, can I? And I said, yes. God forgive Moses. God forgive David. God forgive Paul. He's rich in mercy. He's rich in mercy. Better be glad about that. Sometimes we're awful hard on other people, but we want God to be easy on us. Ain't that right? Uh, we, when it comes to us, we say, oh, Lord, you're mercy. But it's other people, ah, they ought to be, they ought to be put in, in, in hell. They ought to be judged. You know, uh, be careful about how you judge other people because God's been mighty merciful to you. The truth is tonight, people, every one of us, I say this blanket. I mean, I don't know everybody in here, but the truth is every one of us has done stuff we ought to be in hell for. I know I have. And buddy, God's been rich in mercy. Brother Danny, every time I stand up here, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, special services, everything, I, I'm, I'm conscious that he's been merciful to me. And he's been merciful to you. And that's the right a attitude to take. I heard a guy say one time, he said, or I heard that he said it. I was told that he said it. And uh, by eyewitness, he said, I don't care about God. I hate him. Said, when, and when I stand before him, I'll go up there and I'll jerk him off his throne. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, you try that, buddy. <laughs> you try that. You try going up there and jerking him off. You crazy nut. Uh, you're not a speck. We're not a speck in the, in, the, in, the, in the beach. Not one grain of sand to the Lord. You better be just glad he's merciful. Take advantage of it. You've been here this, this morning or this evening and you're all messed up and your life's a wreck. i got good news for you. He's merciful. And you say, well, I've been saved, Brother Danny, and then I mess up and I do stupid stuff and I know it's wrong. And well, God, yes, God is merciful. Now, we'll see in a minute. We'll get to that verse. We're not supposed to sin, but if we do sin, there's mercy. There's mercy. God don't want us to sin, but when we do, thank God there's mercy. All right, now look, let's look at that. Verse 5, even, even when, God is love. See verse, verse 4, he loved us. Even when we were dead in sin, that's before you got saved, you were dead in sin, you were lost, you were dead spiritually. He hath quickened, made you alive, that's what that word quickened, us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. And look at this verse. And hath raised us up together and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ. Uh, Jesus. That, that verse right there is one of them that, that almost, you know, I don't know. That verse right there is one of them that, what, what do you think about that? Uh, what, what do you think that means? He's raised us up together. That means when we got saved, he gave us life. We come back like when you get baptized, you're going down, you get back up. Uh, he, he, he's raised us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Now I've heard that I've heard that scripture uh, taught two or three different ways. One preacher, one commentator says that we are in Christ and He's in us, so that even right now He's sitting at the right hand of God. So spiritually speaking, we are also. Uh, sitting there at the right hand of God because he's in us. That eh, may be a little right. I've heard other people say uh, the Holy Spirit's in us and so the Holy Spirit is in all of us and he's everywhere. He's omnipresent and so he's in heaven and maybe that's what that's talking about. That's a little less iffy. Or, I mean a little more iffy. But what if it's this? What if it's just what if it just really means exactly what it says? What if Somehow or another that we can't understand, we are already there, seated, looking down on us. I don't know. I can't explain that, but that's what it says. That's what it says. Seated in heavenly 
place. Now, a lot of people might say, well, what that means is, Brother Danny, when we're having camp meeting and we're all in, excited and right with the Lord, it just feels like we're in there. Well, that, that may be something to that, that line of thinking, maybe, but it technically it says that we are seated with him in heavenly places. And if that's what that's saying, that's one of the strongest verses in the Bible for eternal security. Because I'm telling you, buddy, we're already there. In God's mind, in God's sight, you're already in heaven. He done seen you there. That's a, that's a blessing. Lord of God, brother. I mean, don't, hey, think about this. When you got saved and you got right with the Lord, didn't, you, didn't something change in you that you sort of just felt like this ain't my home no more? Bible says your citizenship has been changed. We're not even a citizen. I, I tell people that sometimes. They say, where are you from? I said, well, originally I'm Nebo. <laughs> they, they, what's that? <laughs> you know, and they, and, and they give me a hard time. And especially when I say hobby time, they really give you a hard time. Uh, and and they, they'll laugh and everything. And But I said, you know what? I'm not even, I'm, not, I'm a citizen of another country. What country is that? Heaven. My citizenship been changed. We're just pilgrims passing through here. We don't even belong in this world. We're, it could be, it could be that spiritually speaking, we're already there and just waiting on this time to get up for our body to pass through and the rapture come. Bam, our, our, these literal bodies will be changed and we'll be with the Lord forever and ever and ever. That's some deep stuff. That's something for you to chew on when you go home tonight. Uh, read that verse has made us sit together in heavenly places. Some of you geniuses got that figured out? Go ahead, but take it, make it quick because the camera don't pick up. Anybody? All right. You are too. Yeah. Yep, that's good. No, I didn't. We were, before we got saved, we was walking according to the course of the world. And now we're sitting. Some people take that a little too literal. Instead of standing on the promises, we're sitting on the premises. Sitting on the premises of Christ, my Lord, you know. Uh, uh, I, I could tell you another one, but it sounds bad. Preachers say it when they're preaching. Uh, they use them songs. Get up off your, you know what, you know, do something. They say it in a different way with a song. But uh, listen, um, look at verse number seven. Look at verse number seven. That's another little bit of evidence for that third view of that verse, maybe. That in the ages to come, that's on out to under past everything. He might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us. Through Christ Jesus. Boy, that's some that's a meat, brother. That's the meat of the scripture. I mean, Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus, all that's the word of God. But that right there is for us. That's present day truth for the church of Jesus Christ in 2023. That's us right now. He has made us set together in heavenly places that in the ages to come, 20 million years from now, y'all still got to look at me. I bet you don't like that, do you? Uh, I don't look this bad, and you won't either. We'll be together. Listen, the man said, well, somebody, well, I don't like to be around you. Well, I ain't tell you, don't go to heaven. It ain't one of the places you can go. So I hope you enjoy that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be 100 million years from right now. We'll still be showing the riches of his grace. I was going in the closet to pray, and, and I thought the day, and I thought, you know what? I mean, we're going to really praise him forever. And people say, you mean, what are we going to do up there? Well, I'll tell you one thing. You won't be bored. You won't be bored. I've actually had a lot of people say, Brother Danny, I don't mean to be dis disrespectful. I'm like, what in the world are we going to? We're just going to stay up there forever? <laughs> no, no, it ain't going to be boring. Son, the Lord's going to have you plugged into 220, brother, spiritually. You'll be more excited than you've ever been down here on this earth. Times a million. Forever. You will not be bored in heaven. And it, actually, technically, when you say uh, the ages to come, the time will be just like always now because uh, it don't get dark. Don't get night. Some of you won't like that either. Uh, uh, people live in sin or want to sleep all the time. 
But you won't have to sleep in heaven. Ain't that going to be a blessing? He said, no! Uh, <laughs> you won't need it. You won't need it. Now, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll eat. He said, we'll eat. You won't need that either. You just get to. What do you think about that? How many of y'all just like to eat just for the fun of it? Not because you're hungry. Well, that's what we'll do, buddy. I mean, that's what we'll do, son. We'll have a, uh, we'll have a cheesecake look just about the size of that piano right there. And just dig in, brother. No heartburn, no carbs, no high blood pressure, no cholesterol uh, for, for the ages to come, forever and ever and ever. Now, quickly tonight, we're going to hurry. We're going to hit now, honest to goodness, 1,189 chapters in the Bible. And I forgot how many, 100,000 verses, how many 100,000 verses. This is one of the top verses in the entire Bible. This is one of the most often quoted, blessed, high mountain peaks of Scripture, brother. How lofty. It's hard to believe a person actually wrote this. And it's verse 8. And if this is one of the greatest. Everybody memorize this verse. I memorized it right after I got saved. I heard preachers say, memorize verse 8. Here it is. You ready? For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Next verse, not of works, lest any man should boast. What immortal words, y'all. It almost sounds like poetry. You, you've, you've heard it so much. Preach, how many preachers you heard it say, by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. You are saved by God's grace. You know what the definition of grace is? G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. G-R-A-C-E. Listen, brother. Um, I was I was uh, making that little DVD for Sue Ann and then the song there working on that little Easter thing. And, and it, it showed Jesus the crown of thorns being put on his head and, and, and everything. And Frankie was just, he was just looking like that right there. And he said, why did they do that, Daddy? I said, because of our sins, Frankie. Because of our sins. He said, he shouldn't see stuff like that. Yeah, he should. He should know Jesus loved us enough to die for us. Amen. He, what he shouldn't see is probably Batman. <laughs> if you want to talk about something that's bad for kids to see. Uh, but anyway, I, he said, did they do that? He said, how did they get them thorns? He, how did they get them thorns? Did they take a stick? And I said, I don't know. They probably did. Took a reed and smote him on the head. And then you know what? I want him to grow up knowing he did that for me. He did that for me. People say, oh, that's that violent slaughterhouse religion. Well, might be, but God demanded sin be paid for. And Jesus paid that at Christ's expense. I get his riches at Christ's expense. You tell me we shouldn't live for the Lord. You tell me we shouldn't try to get other people saved and fast and pray like we try to do and, and, and we shouldn't honor him and live right and shun sin and say no to the devil. We get God's riches at Christ's expense. Oh, my goodness. Great. Day in the morning. If that won't make you live right, nothing will. Uh, it's, uh, it, it is not of yourselves. Now, you know what the sad thing is? And, and we'll, we'll be through in just about maybe five, six minutes. Um, did you know what the sad thing is? If you stopped, if we're in the Bible Belt. If you stopped 100 people out here in Marion, Morgan, and Hickory States, for Winston-Salem, Greensboro, all the way down to Raleigh, on the street and said, excuse me, sir, how do you get to heaven? If you stopped 100 people, 80 of them would say, be a good person. Do the best you can. And the Bible said, that not of yourselves, not of works. Why? Lest any man should boast. They ain't nobody. Can I tell you something tonight? They ain't nobody that's going to get up in heaven and get up there and say, buddy, I'll tell you what. I worked for years to get here, and I'm, I'm glad I finally made it. I, I told I didn't drink liquor, and I didn't uh, smoke dope, and I didn't, I'm telling you what, ain't nobody going to be there like that. It's not a work. You ain't going to boast. The only thing you're going to boast in is what he did. If I glory, I glory in the cross. Sometimes people get this, they put on this front, like I'm so holy, you know, and everything. I'm just, oh, I'm so godly. Uh, yeah, well, you know, you... You're about as godly as the next sinner that comes along. Uh, the truth is, we've all sinned, come short of the glory of God, and you got wickedness in you, and you have, if I glory, I glory in the cross. Amen. I glory in the cross. 
Hallelujah. Uh, uh, I preach a sermon sometimes when I, uh, because of Titus. Turn over to the book of Titus just a second. Hold your finger there in Ephesians. And let's look at this verse here in Titus chapter, uh, it's right before uh, Titus Philemon, uh, right after 2 Timothy. Titus, uh, and he gives us a great verse here in, uh, uh, let's see here. Yeah, 11, 211. 211, look at it. Uh, look at verse 11, Titus 211. For the grace of God, that's what we're talking about, grace. That bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, all the elect men, if you're a Calvinist, although it didn't say that. Teaching us, what teaches us? The grace of God teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope. That's the second coming and the glorious appearing, uh, the rapture of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, back in Ephesians, our verses here says this, not of works, not of works. A man said, well, don't you have to be baptized? And the answer is no. No, you should be baptized. But if you have to be baptized, here, here's what he didn't say. Jesus died for all your sins and you believe that and get baptized. He said, well, it says that over there in Mark 16. No, it don't. It said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. It don't say he that believeth not and is baptized not shall be damned. Baptism is not a part of your salvation. It's the gift of God. It's a gift. I take you this, I give it to you. If you do something to get it, it's not a gift. It's earned. That's a wage. So salvation is a gift. We ought to shout and praise God over that. You know, one of the biggest tricks the devil pulls on our generation is he portrays God you hear it all the time. You watch the news. Now, I watch very, very little news. Very little news. I watched a couple of that thing. of One of my girls, somebody texted me and said, school shooting somewhere. And I turned it on. Just I, I, don't watch, I ain't watched the, the news a lot in the last year and a half. Uh, uh, ever since that last presidential election and all the stuff going on, you don't, the, in, all the mainstream media, one will lean to the right and the other will lean to the left to keep everybody watching. But they're all got the same plan. I hate to tell y'all that. It basically, they all got the same plan. Where I talked to a boy yesterday. I said, we're headed to a one-world government, a one-world monetary system, your money. That's why the banks are failing. We're headed to a one-world religion, make everybody believe the same so people quit fighting, and a one-world dictator, the Antichrist. That's where it's headed. I mean, it's as plain as a nose on your face. I was talking to this guy yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, and he said, I'm not religious. And he's asked me, we was talking about the government and, and the coronavirus and, and aliens and everything else. He said, I'm surprised that you have that view. I said, well, it's called common sense. He couldn't believe that I, as a preacher, thought the government was corrupt and the coronavirus was a test and aliens are not, are, are not true. Uh, they are. He said, you, so you don't believe in aliens? I said, I sure do. But they ain't little boys coming from Jupiter. They're coming from down there somewhere. Manifesting themselves as an angel of light. And there's, there's creatures, buddy. These creatures. Don't you doubt it for a second. They're all through the Bible. It's all through the Bible. Uh, little demon, demonic powers taking forms. Uh, talked to a girl the other day. She was 15 years old. I don't even know how this little nut knew this. I was out visiting and uh, 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 she said something like that that really bothered me. And I think, how do these people even know about all this stuff? Uh, a teenager lives over yonder somewhere on the other other side of Morgan. And somebody marrying. And they say, well, I was talking to a girl in a trailer park up here one day. And we just walked across the yard. And I said, hey, y'all, you ought to go to church. And I, and I said, uh, I said, they said, well, Satan, soon enough. I said, if Jesus and the devil got in a fight, who would win? And the girl said, I don't know, Satan, I guess. And you know why they believe that? Because he's portrayed on TV as this big red, got big chest muscles and everything. And Jesus looks like this, you know. And he's got, he's got red hair and real white skin. He's, his fans about like a girl. And that's the, way, that's the way the world grows up thinking Jesus. And the world grows up thinking that God is this mean tyrant 
that's ready to slap everybody's brains out if they don't know exactly what he says. And you can thank Hollywood and all Bill Maher and HBO and all them people out there for, for putting that in people's heads. There's people all the time now. They say, well, I'd, "I'd rather go to hell than go to a god than go live with a god like that." That's what they think. See how twisted their mind is. Listen, they don't even realize the goodness of God, the grace of God. Lord, in mercy, He loved you enough to let His Son die for you. He me, He me. People say, "Oh, who in the world could believe in a God that's going to let people burn forever and ever and ever?" I don't believe in a God that will let people burn. Why would God let people burn? Well, I hate to tell you this, but he already has let people burn. There's people burning right now. So don't say God wouldn't let somebody burn. There's people out in burn, hospitals everywhere burning, in fires tonight. So you can't say he wouldn't allow it. It's happening now. But the truth is, he loved this world so much. It's like back in the Old Testament when they when they take over those cities. And, they, and this might have confused some of y'all and say, why did God tell them to go in there and kill all them people? What it was, there was diseases, and I guess the, the kids are not in here, and I hate to say this, but uh, it, was, it was all kind of false God worship and um, bestiality. Because people were having relations with animals. And it's all over this country here tonight. And you know what God said? Because we were going to have to go and destroy them. It wasn't that he's mean, I'll wipe them out so that I can give them the land. They, they destroyed their self. And our generation is doing the same thing. I hate to even say that in front of a mixed congregation, people, but this world rot. And the judgment of God's coming again. You better thank God for his grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. Let's read that one more time and I'm going to quit. Look at verse number nine. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Lordy mercy. Lordy mercy. Grace of God in salvation. Grace of God in separation. Grace of God in desperation. And the grace of God in glorification. One day he'll glorify us and set us up there as trophies of grace. We'll shout forever. All right. Um, stop right there. Let's bow here. I'm sorry. Turn the cameras off.